hi there and welcome to our latest uh, constellation uh, video. Today we're going to look at Pegasus, a constellation that lies in the northern hemisphere. It was first catalogued back in the second century by Ptolemy. and The constellation was named after Pegasus, the winged horse or the flying horse of Greek mythology. It's known for an asterism, the great square of Pegasus, famous in the northern sky as well as a number of bright stars and deep sky objects. Among them, M15 and Stefan's Quintet of Galaxies, but we'll look at those later. It's the seventh largest constellation in the sky and it belongs to the Perseus family. Not surprising. The major stars of the Great Square, the Asterism, which forms the body of the horse, and it's prominent with three bright stars in it. Now, it's an interesting object, this Asterism, because it also contains Alpha Andromedae, which in ancient times was considered to belong to both Pegasus and Andromeda. It marked the navel of the horse and the top of Andromeda's head. In the 17th century, Johann Bayer gave the star a dual designation. He called it Alpha Andromedae and Delta Pegasi. But the name Delta Pegasi has long been retired and the star is now part of Andromeda uh, and known as Alpha Andromedae or its proper name, Alpha Ataz. The other three stars in the Great Square are Markab, Shiat and Algineb. Now Markab, Alpha Pegasi, is a giant with an apparent magnitude of 2.48 and it's about 133 light years away. It has a radius about five times that of the Sun. Shiat or Beta Pegasi is the second brightest star in the constellation, about 1,500 times more luminous than our Sun with an apparent magnitude of 2.42, and it's about 196 light years away. And Algineb, or Gamma Pegasi, is a subgiant with a visual magnitude of 2.84, and it's approximately 390 light years away, and it marks the lower left-hand corner of the Great Square. It's also classified as a Beta Kephi variable, which means its variations in brightness are attributed to pulsations on the star's surface. It's about nine times as massive as the Sun, about five times the solar radius, and about 5,840 times more luminous than our Sun. Moving away from the Great Square, we have Anif, or Epsilon Pegasi, uh, the brightest star in the constellation, and it has a visual magnitude of 2.39, and it's about 690 light years distant from us. It's an orange supergiant, 12 times more massive than the Sun, about 5,000 times more luminous, and about 185 times the Sun's radius. It's a biggie. Homam, or Zeta Pegasi, is the main sequence star with an apparent magnitude of 3.41. It's about 204 light years distant from us, and has about four times the solar radius. It's a rapid rotator, with an estimated rotational velocity of being 100, between 140 and 210 kilometers per second. Another interesting object is 51 Pegasi. Now, 51 Pegasi is a main sequence star similar to the Sun, about 50 light years from us, and it has an apparent magnitude of 5.49. It was the first star ever discovered similar to the Sun, having a planet in its orbit. The star has a radius 24% larger than the Sun, and it's 11% more massive. It's older than the Sun, estimated in the region of about 6 to 8 billion years old. And the exoplanet 51 Pegasi b, which was discovered on October the 6th, 1995, has at least half the mass of Jupiter, and it was nicknamed Bellifron. If I can pause for one moment and just say please subscribe to this channel, it means a lot to me because it shows me that people are interested in what I'm doing. Also, it means a lot because YouTube see the subscriptions going up and realise that people like what I'm doing and, and they promote me as well. There's no money for me in this, but uh, please subscribe if you can. Just click the little button at the bottom. Thank you. Let's continue. Let's look at deep sky objects now. Cumulo de Pegaso, Messier 51, a globular cluster with an apparent magnitude of 6.2, about 33,600 light years distant from us. Discovered by the Italian born astronomer Jean Dominique Maraldi 
in 1746. And it was in Messier's original 1764 catalogue. It's believed to be about 12 billion years old, which makes it one of the older globular clusters known. And it contains more than 100,000 stars, including a double neutron star, M15C. It's also home to Peace One, a planetary nebula discovered in 1928. The first planetary nebula ever discovered in a globular cluster. And M15 also contains two bright X-ray sources. Uh, Messier 15X1 and Messier 15X2. Stefan's Quintet, an interesting object, a group of five galaxies, NGC 7317 to 7320, first discovered by the French astronomer uh, Edouard Stefan at the Marseille Observatory in 1877, about 280 million light years from Earth. Four of the five galaxies were the first compact galaxy group ever discovered. And now onto something a little different. Q2237 plus 030, otherwise known as Einstein Cross or Einstein's Cross. The Einstein Cross is a gravitationally lensed quasar located behind Hooker's lens, a galaxy named after the American astronomer John Hooker. The phenomenon of gravitational lensing is one of the effects predicted by the general theory of relativity, postulated by Einstein, once he realised that gravity can bend light. The lensing effect is the result of space-time around a massive object such as a black hole or a galaxy cluster curving, which allows rays of light from a source behind the object to be bent. So the image of the background source is distorted and magnified. And you see it as four images. So what we can see here is the central object and the four bright images of the quasar appearing around the galaxy in the foreground as a result of the strong uh, gravitational lensing. The quasar is about 8 billion light years distant from us, while Hooker's lens galaxy lies about 200 million light years away. Well, that's all um, for this look at Pegasus, one of the easier um, autumn constellations to see in the northern sky i hope you enjoyed it if you did stay tuned see you next time take care bye for now and dark skies mm -hmm.